Hey YouTubians, what's up? I'm another XYZ and welcome back to another Club Banger. Today we're hanging out in r slash Tales from Retail. Tales from the front line of the retail establishment. So let's just go ahead and hop it right on in. This first post is by the user Sire3172. The title of the post is, A customer made me cry today. I started working at a major department store about three weeks ago, and this is my first retail job. Me, me, see, customer. Today, I was working the cash register in the older women's clothing department. A customer comes up to pay her store credit card bill. She hands me $80, and I ask, is this how much you want to pay? And she says, yes. Then she has to approve the amount on the signature pad. I finish her transaction, then hand her receipt, and she asks, where is my change? There is no change. You handed me $80 and told me you wanted to pay $80. No, I only wanted to pay 78 that's how much my bill was. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but I can't see how much your bill is. And you also verify the amount on the signature pad. If you pay more than the amount on your bill, it goes towards credit for the next month, so you aren't losing any money. At this point, she begins to raise her voice at me. Why would I want to pay more than my bill? I want my change back now. I'm still fairly new, and I never learned how to cancel a completed transaction. I try to call one of the managers, but the phones aren't going connecting. Then, I decide I should ask one of my coworkers for help. Could you wait one moment while I go ask for help to get your change? Then the customer starts to yell and berate me. She tells me I'm stupid, and it's going to be all my fault if she can't get her money back. Around this time, my eyes start to tear up, and I go find a coworker to help her. The woman pays her bill for around $78 and gets less than $2 in change. After the customer leaves, I went to the bathroom and cried about it. Then, my manager spoke to me and told me I handled the situation poorly, even though I had tried to call her. TLDR. A customer yelled and berated me because of a mistake and caused me to cry. My manager then verbally reprimanded me. Update. Thank you all for the kind words. I'm going to look for a new job, but keep this one in the meanwhile. Also, I'm going to ask to talk to my manager about what she wants me to do if something like this happens again. Maybe then we can find a solution and resolve this issue. And a lot of the comments in the comment section on this one were essentially saying how the manager handled it really poorly. Because what were you supposed to do if you never learned how to cancel a finished transaction? Then of course you're going to phone somebody for help. You reached out to your manager. The phones weren't working. You reached out to one of your coworkers, and it sounds like eventually it got straightened out. Now, when it comes to handling it poorly, I definitely agree that your manager handled that poorly. If you didn't know how to do something... It's not your fault, it seems to me more of like it being a lack of training as opposed to something where you were incompetent because you did pretty much everything you could in that situation. And if that person was being outwardly rude to you over $2, a $2 credit on their bill, then honestly, they're just, they have some sort of anger issue at that point. This next post is by the user S317SV17VNV. The title of the post is, I know what you're looking for, we don't sell it. It occurred to me that some customers, usually older ones, seem to think that the item they are looking for will somehow materialize if they give us as much of a description as possible. A few examples. An older couple stops me as I'm supervising the sales floor, and the wife asks me if we sell LED candles. No ma'am, unfortunately we don't sell those, but I reckon Redacted may have what you're looking for. LED candles, like for memorials! Yes, I figured we were thinking the same thing. And as I said, we don't sell them. Her husband then holds his phone up to my face. The screen showed a picture of an LED candle. Me internally screaming, I know what this is, we definitely don't sell them. A few minutes later, I saw the couple speaking to one of the salespeople, who had a look of help on his face. There was another time, a few weeks later, while I was at the top of a ladder looking for something on a high shelf, when I heard the faint sound of a voice saying, Light bulbs? After I heard it two more times, I looked around to figure out where the voice was coming from, since I didn't hear any salesperson responding, and I saw an old lady standing next to my ladder looking up at me. Oh, I'm sorry ma'am, I didn't realize you were speaking to me, because you just said light bulbs instead of excuse me or something that usually gets someone's attention. How can I help you? Where are your light bulbs? I'm sorry, we don't sell light bulbs, you could try the pharmacy across the street perhaps? The old lady reaches into her purse and pulls out a light bulb to show me. Light bulbs like this kind! Me internally screaming, 
I know what a light bulb is, we just don't sell them. And clearly, the light bulb in your head is a bit dim. We don't sell light bulbs of any kind. It's like some people think that even after we've said this with certainty, that we don't have what they need. They're asking multiple times, each time with a greater detail than the last, will somehow make us suddenly realize we have a secret stash of them somewhere. And I know this struggle personally because I used to work at the Apple store and people would come in all the time and be like, hey, um, do you have a cable for a Motorola? They would think we're just like a general cell phone store when really we're not. Uh, we sell Apple products, like what are you doing? People would come in and they'd be like, yeah, I have a cord uh, I'm looking for for this uh, Samsung. Do you guys have one of those? And I'm like, no, not, not really because we don't make anything that would work with a Samsung device, I don't think, at least the type of charger that you're looking for. Then they'd point the plug at me and I'd be like, bro, I know what kind of plug you're talking about. If it's not a USB-C, we don't sell it here, dog. This next post is by the user Hate Doubly Standar. The title of the post is, Lady walks out of store because the express lane isn't good enough for her. I work in a grocery store and I'm just coming off my break. My colleague had to go on his 15 minute break. So I took over from him in the self checkout. Then it was only me and my supervisor left on the floor at that moment and it was getting busy as. Self service was busy too. In my supervisor's queue in the express lane, it's built into the service desk where the supervisor runs. There's a lady with a full trolley who's folding her arms, looking around, and, rest in peace, she makes eye contact with me. Excuse me, can you open a register? You're doing nothing. I'm sorry, I can't leave the area. We're down by one colleague, he's on his break. We have no one else. He'll open up for you when he comes back. That's not good enough. How long? Uh, ten minutes. You can just go through the express lane. It's fine. I don't want to be served through there. I want a full checkout. That's ridiculous. I want to speak to the manager. I was spared answering because someone tapped me on the shoulder for self-checkout intervention. Actually, five flashing red lights. I was certainly not about to just drop my stuff and leave to open a register, and supervisor was stuck too, serving the customers an express. The angry customer was literally next in line, about to be served, but then moved away and folded her arms and stuck her nose in the air. Colleague came back from his break and she just vents at him. He even offered to just open a register for her, but she said, No, I've had enough. I'm walking out. I'm done here. Goodbye. Have fun putting my stuff back. And she leaves her trolley and walked out, and my mouth starts curling into a smirk. When it the busyness piped down a bit, the supervisor said, Don't worry. If she makes a complaint, it's on her. She was offered to be served through Express, but that wasn't good enough for her. It's like getting a free meal and complaining it didn't come with sauce. Bruh, why was this person complaining so much? I love the express lane. It's the most delightful thing. Sometimes the line can be a bit long if it's a bunch of people under 10 items or 15 items or whatever the store's limit is. But just because there are less items there, the lines tend to fly by a bit quicker because those are the people that are just trying to get in and get out of there, man. And that's my type of line. Self-checkout too, oh my goodness. I love self-checkout. If a store doesn't have self-checkout, I'm usually kind of annoyed by it. That's a, a whole different tangent. But at the same time, this person just needed to take a chill pill, bruh. Sometimes it gets busy. There's a local grocery chain where I'm at where a lot of the times lines can get heck along and there's only like two or three people. But they make up for that in the fact that you pay so much less for food. I mean, it's kind of give or take. But this person just sounds like they were really, really, really just set on having that full checkout experience. This next post is by the user, The Bonnie Jones. The title of the post is, I got bitten by a pocket-sized demon rat. No one cared. A couple of years ago, I worked in a clothing store, which is part of a Swedish company that owns multiple high street clothing brands and has many stores internationally. It's a pretty well-known, and since I worked in the biggest one in my city, we had loads of tourists visiting. Also, my city, Amsterdam, and the store I worked in are both very popular amongst Russians. And whilst I've met many nice Russian people and even made friends with a few, a lot of them tend to be very rude to people in the service industry. The store was always very busy, but especially during the sales periods, the line for the fitting rooms was very long. And since the store was also quite big, we had shifts in different areas of the store. I was assigned to the women's fitting room that day. It was our policy that the customers waited outside of the fitting room area, which was a separate room with five fitting rooms in it. 
the employee would stand next to the entrance, and when a fitting room became available, we'd call a customer in, we'd count the items, we had a maximum of seven, and hang them up in the available fitting room. On this particular day, there was an extremely rude Russian lady, I'll call her RL, who definitely didn't like the long wait. To paint the picture, she was pretty and very petite, but went way overboard with the plastic surgery. Fillers, nose job, and boob job, all included. She kept her sunglasses on inside, and when I greeted her, she ignored me. I politely told her that a fitting room would soon be available, and that I would take her to when it did. She still ignored me. When another customer finished and handed me the clothes, didn't plan on purchasing, she tried to walk into the fitting room. Before I could take or count the items, she had, despite being told that I'd take them from her. Excuse me, miss. Could you please wait? I'd like to see how many pieces you have. What? Could I see how many pieces you have? Russian lady sighs and turns around. I proceed to walk over to count the pieces of clothing. I reach for pieces of clothing she's holding when, out of nowhere, a wild chihuahua appears. It was in her handbag, which bites my effing hand. I pull my hand back and look at her, in complete disbelief. She looks me straight in the eye. I think it was hard to tell with the sunglasses on, and says in an unimpressed tone, Da! which means yes in Russian, apparently. Then, turns around and locks the fitting room door. I was in absolute shock. That fucking demon rat bit me. The other customers seemed to be just as shocked as I was. I called over a colleague and said with a shaky voice that I was going to drink a glass of water in the back room. I started crying, which might have been slightly overdramatic, and after I disinfected the wound, my managers made me finish my shift and didn't kick her out. Side note, Dogs aren't even allowed in the store, so I guess she bought a lot of stuff, so they were happy. Also, I didn't get rabies, but my ego was definitely bruised. I wish I would have slapped the bitch, not the dog, and I've thought about it many times since. But I can laugh about it now. I'm sorry the ending wasn't very satisfying, but I hope at least a few of you got a good laugh out of it. I am over here not laughing at all, bro. This is not funny. The moment a dog bites me, bruh, it's game over. Because I have a dog... He's very well behaved, he doesn't bite people, he's very friendly, we've trained him to be a good boy. Hi buddy. He's very uninterested in what I'm talking about right now because he's listening to me do voiceovers, but bruh, get your dog under control. And then your manager made you work the rest of the shift, come on dude. I smell some sort of weird liability thing. I probably would have at least done like an incident report, see if it was something where you were concerned enough to get medical attention because... Who knows, that dog may have had some sort of disease, and we will never know. Alright y'all, well thank you for joining me in r slash tales from retail. Tales from the front lines of the retail establishments, always a really good time. If you have any suggestions for any subreddits, go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below. And like at the end of every one of my videos, no glove, no love. Peace.